greetings in that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we honor the Lord for his goodness and his mercy uh, to our very soul. And we are thankful for those of you that are here uh, in person at our Bible study tonight. And to those who are watching us uh, virtually through Facebook and also by YouTube and Marco Polo. We greet you in that matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which there is no other name by which we can be saved. Uh, we are continuing our dialogue with uh, Revelations and going through it chapter by chapter, hopefully verse by verse, giving some understanding of prophecy. There are over a thousand prophecies in the Bible relative to the book of Daniel. Um, also uh, 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 in the book of Revelations, Thessalonians, and uh, simply amazing also in the book of Ezekiel. And so we're going to uh, look at the prophecies and look at this warp that John the Revelator is in. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we honor you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. You are a wonderful God. And for that, we give your name the glory. We give your name uh, the praise. Lord, you're so good and you're so kind. And you've given us the opportunity uh, to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. Lord, we turn our eyes away from sin and from um, the enemy. And we fix our eyes upon you, oh God. We beg that you would take charge of our life and even this ministry. Bless your people and we'll give your name the glory. We'll give your name the praise. And come on, let's give God a praise. Let's several weeks uh, we've been covering um, with great diligence um, Revelations chapter 1 through 3 and uh, just as a review for those of you and I'll use the board just as a review uh, chapters 1 2 and 3 um, are quite fun fundamental um, and in chapters 1, 2, and 3, uh, it deals with, uh, number one, God is supreme. Amen. Okay. Amen. God, through the Lord Jesus Christ. The word revelation in Latin means apocalypse. It is apocalypse, which means things to come. Or, actually, the word means revelation. So, the book of Revelation, in its literal sense, is called Apocalypse. Um, it gives a forecast of those things that should come. Interesting enough, in the book of Revelation, just some, some history, it, it supports that Jesus is God, the Lord, glory to the Father. And in chapter number one, John the Revelator is on what is called the Isle of Patmos. Uh, he's been in prison uh, from Greek history. He's in uh, some boiling uh, oil, uh, left to this island uh, to die. He is the last disciple. All of the other disciples have been killed, they've been mangled, they've been strangled, they've been hung, 
They've been four cornered. Uh, Peter was literally crucified upside down, um, as the scripture and history gives us. And so John wanted to make sure that the churches in Asia Minor knew that Jesus is still Lord to the glory of the Father. And that the book is more about revealing that Jesus is Lord. So in the beginning, very clear, Jesus uh, is God. He is the Lord of us all. And we're going to find as we continue this study that uh, he reaffirms, John reaffirms that Jesus is Lord in the beginning. And then the last chapter, Revelation chapter number 21, he then reasserts that Jesus is Lord in that ultimately um, the Antichrist uh, and uh, the devil, two different people, uh, and death were thrown into the lake of fire. Mm. Mighty, mighty power that ultimately Jesus yes. is Lord. The second piece is that it talks to the Jewish nation and that God is giving them some warning about who he is and that Jesus is Lord. And it reaffirms Revelation chapters 1 through 3 that God's hand is still on Israel. It's still on Israel. God's hand is still on Israel, even though Israel has rebuffed God or rebuffed Jesus. They don't recognize him as the Mashuk Messiah, which means he is the Messiah. But his message is to them that I'm still going to deliver you with my right hand. Just as he did in Exodus chapter number 19, he says to Israel, I'm going to deliver you by my right hand. And we're going to notice as we study that there are going to be two nations, Gog and Magog. They're going to come together to brandish an attack against Israel. It is no secret, and I'm going to give you uh, the mystery. Those two, those two countries exist today. Magog is China, and Gog is Russia. They're going to come. They're going to join forces. Russia, Gog, has the technology, and Magog has the force. You're talking China uh, over nearly 5 million soldiers in their army. And they're going to join. Isn't it interesting as we are listening to and watching current history that we see Russia poised uh, to invade the Ukraine? Uh, is it called Ukraine? What is it called? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, and that... China is poised to invade Taiwan and daring America to do something about it. And so Gog and Magog are going to join together. Russia and China are going to join forces and come through Europe. This is the reason why Ukraine is so important because it is the door into Europe. And once they break that door down, there will be no recovery. In the Middle East, we're going to see uh, a battle waging. And the battle waging is going to be for oil and the distribution of oil. There is a part where Iran and uh, Israel will have a skirmish. It may be this year. And the skirmish is going to be not just over climate, but it's going to be over oil. Because in order to get the oil from the Middle East, it's got to go through the territory of Iran. And Iran is going to do a blockade. Talking, taking, or closing the ports 
for all to come in, for the ships to go in and for those ships to come out. This will spell World War III. Iran will blockade ships coming out of the Middle East transporting oil. I promise you. And so when that happens, America will blow Iran up. They will. Unless there are other skirmishes in other parts of the world, such as Russia and the Ukraine. So our focus is there. We've just sent uh, some three or 4,000 troops to the Ukraine, rushing there as Russia is building up. And all Russia is doing is pushing fingers. We want to see how far it can go utilizing uh, that scare tactic. And China is saying, we dare you if we take over the providence of Taiwan, which is very democratic, we dare you to do something. So here God is saying, even when Gog and Magog attack you, I'm going to come to your defense. Oh, my God. Let me tell you something right now. When God is on your side, even when you are not on his side, when God is on his, your side, he will fight your battles. Mm -hmm. And here, number two, he says, I'm going to fight with you. I'm going to deliver you by my right hand. Then number three, uh, in chapters one through three, he deals with uh, the endurance of the saints. And he's encouraging the saints to endure hardness as a good soldier. And for those that endure, they shall have eternal life. Yes. So the book of Revelation is not just a scare yes. tactic. It is God is still supreme. Yes. No matter what we see, God's hand is still on Jewish, yes. on the Jewish nation, and he will defend the Jews regardless if America stands or not. Yes. I think it's quite interesting because in the scripture, I can find nowhere where the United States is in some uh, prophetic defense of uh, Israel. We don't know what has happened to the eagle. She disappears in the book of Revelations. And I'm here to tell you, you can't, you can't murder a million cheer children a year through abortions. And you can't not uh, continue to allow same-sex marriage. And God does not deal with it. I told you before that if God does not deal with the United States, he's got to repent for what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, amen. Glory, hallelujah. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for its debauchery. Oh, my. And giving uh, laws that revert the laws of God. And then he says, but endure to the end. Yes, hold on just a little while longer. And if you can hold on, God is going to deliver. Hallelujah. Somebody say, stay connected. Stay connected. So what the enemy wants to do, he wants to isolate you. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You've got to know that the enemy is trying to isolate you. Where is that? Uh, down underneath. Okay. He's got to, uh, he's telling you, stay connected with God and you will be okay. So um, we're going to see something in Revelations uh, and it's going to be isolation versus insulation. There's a difference. Isolation is to be disconnected. It is to be fragmented. And so we're going to find out here in the book of Revelations uh, and also in the book of Daniel what the enemy wants to do in isolation is to wear the saints out. Yes. Come on. Jesus. How does he wear you out? By stress. Amen. And by disconnection. 
disassociated. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible tells us, I believe it's in Acts or maybe it's in Hebrew, not to forsake yourself Hallelujah. to the assembly of the saints. Maybe, Amen. maybe it's that is the Hebrews or the Acts, one of the two. And so we're going to see what the enemy is going to do is try to isolate you. But the, but the Bible says you're not isolated, you're insulated. Yeah. No yeah. weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Yeah. Insulation means what is inside of you yes. stays inside of you. Yes. What is warm, it stays warm. Yes. He protects you yes. from the radius things that happen. So it is isolation to pick you off, to wear you out mentally, stress you out, mm. Come on, sir. versus staying connected to yes. God. Yes. Hallelujah. Even the weakest saint has the ability to have victory over Satan. Amen. I don't care how weak you are. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. So no matter what your issues are, your weaknesses or your addictions or your habits, as long as you can call on the name of the Lord. For the Bible says, those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So he says, I want to insulate you. I want you to be protected. Even the weakest saint is still protected and provided by God. Somebody give God a hand right now. Yes, Lord. 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 Thank you, Father. Holy. So in Revelation chapter number four, we see John going through a door. He goes through a door. This is important. The door represents a time shift. The door represents opportunity. And the door represents revelation. This door, there was a door in chapters 1 through 3 that John talked about. He said uh, when describing uh, the churches that God would open the door that no man could close. And that he's going to close the door that no man can open. That was one door. And in chapters 1 through 3, he goes through a door. And how does he go through this first door? And there are about seven doors in the book of Revelation. And we'll talk about those entrances. The first door he gets through is this. It is quoted. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Hallelujah. So what does that mean? If you're going to receive revelation, if you're going to receive understanding, you can only get this through the Spirit. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yes. He's talking about spiritual entrance. Yes. How do you get spiritual entrance? Does anybody have any idea? How do you get spiritual entrance? Okay, through the Spirit. You've got to, you can't get the revelation. By going to school. I don't care how much schooling you get. Come on. Man, yes. That does not necessarily give you access to God. Yes. You've got to have that access through the Holy Spirit. Yes. Born again, yes. Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. But let me tell you another piece. On, and, and we don't want to hear this. Another entrance into spiritual doors is through something called... 
Everybody say suffering. 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 Yes. Amen. If I suffer, then I will reign with him. Yes. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. righteous. Yes. But that but is the door. <laughs> Many are the sufferings of the sanctified. But God gives them access to be delivered by them all. So the stronger you become and the maturity, the, the more mature you become, you begin to have access through doors. Yes, amen. So in chapter number four, David goes through another door. He goes through a door in chapters one through three. And in that door, he sees Jesus. He sees the lamp set stands. He sees the candles. He sees the stars. He sees um, the stars in Jesus' right hand, the description of what Jesus looked like. And he saw him. He was so far uh, horrified. The Bible says he fell like a dead man. So the question is, when he fell out, was that the physical or was that the spiritual? Was he... He was definitely in the spirit because there was a door. But was he also in the flesh? Did he literally see Jesus? Look at someone and say, did he really see him? Did he really, did he really see Jesus? Now, if John could see Jesus, is it possible for saints today to see him? I know the song says, oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. What if he showed you himself today? And does and can saints see the Lord Jesus Christ? John saw the Lord Jesus Christ. I am persuaded that there are people who have seen him. I believe that Jesus has walked the earth and has appeared. You're telling me for for 3,000 years he hasn't touched earth? He has been here. But it is through the spirit and through suffering that we... Haven't you heard those times the children have said, I just saw Jesus. Uh, Some of us may doubt it, but many folk may have an experience. Here in chapter number four, he goes through this second door, and this second door, this second door, is to heaven. He goes somewhere, he's not sure where he is through the first door, But the second door, we see Jesus bidding him to what? Come up. Amen. Come on, sir. Yes, amen. Now, is he coming up or is he getting closer? But the Bible tells us he is entering a door. Mm -hmm. And Jesus speaks to him and says, come up and see what's going on. Oh, my. So the question here is, mm, and we're going to read real quickly. Where is heaven? It's up there. The Bible says that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So where is heaven? Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be so earth and heaven are not the same place, right? Not right now. But eventually. Eventually, it will be. The seas will be removed and the earth will be renewed. And mm. set his kingdom. Okay, so where is heaven? Here's the question. Is heaven literal or is it symbolic? 
Come on, Bob. It's literal. <laughs> I think I think having is um, symbolic. It's spiritual. It's um. It's where you when you when they say when you leave from here, um, we meet God in the spirit. Okay. We don't meet Him in the physical because our physical bodies are still here. All right. So you're thinking you're saying it's symbolic. Yes. Then there is no heaven. No. Okay. I, heaven is literal, but it's not. I, it's not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. Okay. I can't think of how I want to put it in a way. Oh. Okay. All right. I, I, I hear you. I, I like that answer a little better. Yes, sir. Paul yes. He said he was caught up to the third heaven. He was pulled to the third heaven. He was caught up to the third heaven, and then he said he was caught up into the paradise. Okay. Is paradise and heaven the same place? No. Different place. No. When Jesus told the thief on the cross, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. In paradise. <clears throat> well, we know he didn't go to heaven. Yeah. Ooh, uh -oh. <laughs> when he died, he was buried in the earth. Yeah. So he doesn't go to heaven until Acts chapter number one. Nearly 60, 40 days. He's walking the earth, y'all. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then he sees the disciples on a mount and tells them, but ye shall receive power after which that the Holy Ghost come upon you. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, they saw him, guess what? Ascend, Ascend into up heaven. into heaven. heaven. So paradise a place of rest. Come on. Yeah. Sleeping in the bosom, as they call it, of Abraham. Yes. Resting for that day when the bodies are going to be reckoned. So heaven is a real place. Yes. And maybe I shouldn't say literal. Maybe it's celestial. Okay. Literal is something that I can, I can touch. Yeah. Uh, and symbolic is a, a fragment of my mentality. Yeah. But celestial and terrestrial are two different things. Yeah. Celestial is heavenly. Terrestrial, come on somebody, yes, is earthly. Yes. That which is flesh is flesh. Yeah. That which is what? Spirit is spirit. And so heaven is just as real as earth. Yes, amen. But in a different form. Yes. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. At hand. So the, the, the scriptures that you were quoting about binding and loosing, those principles of heaven we can have on earth. Right. And we use those principles from heaven to earth to earth to heaven to do God's will here. That's it. That's in it. Time from eternity into time. It's an extension. It is an extension. With an extension. The reason why Jesus had to come to earth because he was celestial right. and had to become terrestrial yeah. in order to fight for us. Yeah. He had to subdue the laws of the earth and he couldn't do it celestial. He had to come in the form of flesh. Yes, right. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Because there are laws of the celestial. That's it. Right. Okay? And then there are laws of the terrestrial. What goes up? That's a law of nature. What goes around? That's a law of nature. That's, you know, circumference or, or, or it's gravity. Okay? Those are laws. How light travels, those are laws of the earth. And just as the laws on the earth say, if I jump up, I must come down. That's a law. That's a terrestrial law. But if I jump up in the spirit, I don't ever have to come down. Amen. Oh, you all can't get that one. Amen. Because I'm in a different body. Yes. That's right. 
That's why Thessalonians tells us that our body is going to be changed yeah. to adapt to what? Yeah. Heaven. Yeah. You're eligible. Come on, somebody. Yes, amen. So, 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 so here he is. He goes to heaven. And let's read here. After this, I looked. And behold, here's the door. The Bible says, a door open in heaven. Yes. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither, and I will show you things which must be here after. So he says, you've got to walk through this door. Oh, my. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I feel no evil, for thou art with me, that rod, that staff. They come. We go through doors through the Holy Spirit. We go through doors with revelation, but also through suffering. So he bids John not only come through the door, but come up. Amen. Mm. 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 So our thoughts have to be heavenly yeah. of things above yeah. and not of things below. Yes. Amen. He said that if you want to see the future, you're going to have to walk through this door. Yes. Now it's interesting and we'll find out and we'll see the description of heaven in the book of Revelation. And in the book of Revelations, there are 12 entrances into heaven. Yeah. Four doors to the north, four doors to the south, four doors to the east, four doors to the west. Yeah. So what door is he talking about? Is there a door before the door? Mm. <laughs> mm. I, I understand it's too deep. I'm, I'm, I'm just having have you fun. City. So, is there a door, or is he going through one of those twelve doors to enter this place called heaven? Hmm. Is it the same door? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And Jesus says, "Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter." And immediately, I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. So when he comes into this place called heaven, the Bible says there's a throne. It's a throne room. Okay. Here's the entrance. Here's the door here. When he goes through the door, he sees a throne room. And how do you know it's a throne room? Because a king is sitting on a seat, a throne. Okay. High and lifted up. Yes, amen. So he immediately he knows he's in a special place. Because of his history of understanding where kings rule from. Yes. It's from the throne room. Yes. So what's in this throne room that he needs to write about? When he walks through the door, he hears a voice. Right. The voice sounds like a trumpet. Actually... It's the trump of God. And, and that is symbolic. It's not literal. It's symbolic. The trumpet is the piece of equipment that calls Israel to order. Yes. Does anybody know what we call that? The shofar. Yes. Cry loud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Show my people their transgressions, the house of Jacob, their sins. And so this trumpet, it's English, but really his voice sounds like a shofar. And it calls folk to attention. 
That's how clear his voice is. And of course, who's this talking to him? Jesus. Who's sitting on the throne? Jesus. God, Jesus. Who's sitting on the throne? Mm. Come on, y'all looking at me. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, verse, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. Do spirits sit? Hmm. They can. The Holy Ghost sits on us. Okay. Acts 2, 1 and 4. Let's see. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper. What's a jasper? Does anybody have any idea? It's a stone, but what type of stone? It's crystal. That's it. It's a crystal stone. And so emanating from the throne is this great illumination of white light. It was like jasper. And what is a sodas or a sodding? Does anybody know what color a sodden is? is it's another stone and it's Gold. red. Oh. Come on, somebody. Man. So we have a crystal light and we have a red light that signifies his blood. Yeah. So he, this light is emanating through the, from the throne. It's white. It's clear. I'm going to show you all where we get the name Crystal Cathedral. Okay. There is a reason why we call this the crystal. But as he's sitting on the throne, this being... He sees light coming from the throne. Great light. Great illumination. It's white and it's red. And it's bright. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. So there is a rainbow. And a rainbow represents God's covenant with man. Yes. That's why that's so significant. Amen. So there is great light coming from that seat. There is red light coming from that throne seat. And around it is the rainbow. And that rainbow uh, signifies I have a covenant, a connection with man. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's what that color represents. But around that light is also something as of emerald. So what's the color of emerald? Green, okay? So there's a red light, there's white light, there's a rainbow in the tenure of an emerald, which consists of God's promises, hallelujah, to man. So these lights are representative. And around about the throne were four and 20 seats. Four Four and twenty seats, it says what? Round or what? Okay. Round about. So circling this throne are seats. And the Bible says there are twenty-four. The twenty-four. Okay. That twenty-four represents the twelve tribes of Israel the leaders of the 12 tribes, and the other 12 represents the 12 disciples. Yes, amen. Minus Judas. <laughs> okay. Judas is not there. Um, I, don't, I, I don't think so. I'm not saying he's in hell, I, but there is a 12th disciple. So those seats represent the 12 tribes of Israel, and it represents, guess what? The 12 disciples. They are circling the throne, and guess what they're doing? Giving God praise. Yes. Amen. Come on. Wow. He said, um, and um, I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads what? Crowns, Crowns of gold. Mm -hmm. So hear this. When you make it to heaven, you shall have, literally, I shall wear a crown. Yeah. 
crown. The elders have a crown. But we're going to see in the book of Revelations that those who have made it to heaven will be given the crown of life. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, there are more than one crown. But everybody's going to get, guess what? A crown of life. You made it into heaven, you're going to have a crown of life. But some of us are going to have many crowns because of the things that we endured. Hallelujah. Amen. But these 24, 24 elders uh, have crowns, and they are the crown of life. And we're going to see what are they going to do with their crown. And out of the throne proceeded lightings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. What do you think those seven lamps are? Amongst this throne. The churches, that's it. They represent it in the presence. The seven churches. We talked about those seven churches. It's a time period. It's literally a church. It's really, it's about what the church has gone through. So they are there. And within those lamps are the what? Seven spirits of God. We learned about the seven spirits of God in Isaiah chapter number 11, right? Amen. Spirit of power, spirit of might, spirit of wisdom, the Holy Spirit, spirit of uh, fear of the Lord. So all of these uh, things are in the presence of this throne. And let's look. At verse number six, and before the throne there was a what? Sea of glass like unto what? That's where our name comes from. What do you think that sea of crystal represents? The saints. That sea of crystal dressed in their white robes. Crown of life. John saw this crystal sea. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And the interpretation of this sea is the saints are surrounding this throne. Thank you. Mm. Wow. Mm. And the Bible says the, the, the four and twenty elders are saying, Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even the crystal saints are, guess what? They are glorifying God. By saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Bible is saying is that they are saying this repeatedly. All day, all night. Praise is going up amongst the throne. Woo. And that praise is so powerful. We're going to read. It's combustible. Yeah. It starts a fire at the altar of the throne. Yes. They are praising God so great that the altar catches on fire. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I know we say it now like you said it tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. That's a suffering hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a going through hallelujah. But when you make it to heaven, and there's no more disease. No more growing old. No more sickness. No more cancer. No more strokes. No more having to afford. Your praise is going to be so hot. And how is it going to be praised? My soul looks back in wonder. How I made it over. Hallelujah. I went through this and I went through that. I fell. I got up. I suffered. I cried. But I'm here at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm talking about you are really free. No more lying. No more cheating. No more dying. No more sickness. I'm free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. After you've gone through this, and you've gone through that, and you've endured to the end, and now you're in the presence of Jesus Christ. 
can you imagine the shouting that's going to be going on? Yeah, I don't think folk are going to be saying, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No more come by y'all. Ain't no come by here. He's there. When you have made it over. Woo, I don't think it's going to be Hallelujah. I think somebody going to be dancing. Come on. I think Pop is going to be doing the shindig. Come on, somebody. Scott is going to be doing somersault. Stella on somebody. Sister Press is going to be running. Somebody going to be jumping. Somebody going to be dancing. Come on. Saying hallelujah. 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 That's why it's important. To lift your head up high and yeah. say, yes, yes. when life problems come your way, lift your head up high and say, hallelujah. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And you know what hallelujah means? All praises be to Jesus. Yeah. All praises be to Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All praises be to our God. Yeah. And so here are these 24 elders, the lamps, which represents the churches, and the crystal sea, the saints, are praising him. Yeah. Come on, yeah. giving God the glory. Here we go. Not only are there um, um, the elders and this, sister, uh, this crystal sea or witnesses in the midst of the throne and round about the throne, were four beasts, and that word beast there is creatures. Yeah. And this creature, like a creature that we've never seen before, there are four of them, they have eyes all over them, literally. We only have two eyes. These four creatures have eyes on the front, on the side, in the back, full of eyes. And that means they cannot be deceived. Amen. And those four beasts actually represent Matthews, Mark, Luke, and John. Yes, amen. One creature is a creature of an ox. Yes. One is a creature of an eagle. One is a creature of a man. One is a creature of um, a... Uh, a cow play, plugging and playing through uh, a field. My God. These four beasts represent the Gospels. Matthews, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm sorry, one is called a lion. So Matthews represents um, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mark is, he is, and he represents an ox plugging the field and that what he and he says in the last chapter of 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 that you know coming to me and i'm gonna give you rest i want you to share my i'm going to help you uh, the book of john um, um matthew mark luke then represents here he is as um the man of god the son of man this creature represents that. And then the last is John represents an eagle. He's the eagle eye. He sees all. So amongst this, we have the 24 elders. We have the seven churches. We have the crystal seed that are the saints. And then these very strange creatures that have six wings. Most of us thought that angels only have two wings. But there are some angels that have no wings, and there are angels that have two wings, and then there are angels that have six wings. Amen. Six wings are the ability to fly quickly, yes. my God. And there are some angels that don't have any wings. And the Bible talks about that. Be careful how you entertain strangers, yes. because you might entertain angels unaware. Yes. I think you would know they were angels, if they had wings on. Yeah. 
<laughs> so there are angels that walk the earth today. Amen. Yeah, Come on. Right. There yeah. are angels that walk the earth. And then there are flying angels, uh, warring angels. Amen. They have two wings. And then there are six wings, angels, that are messengers. They fly to mm -hmm. and from the throne. Somebody said, thank yeah. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank These Lord. are the four beasts. And the first beast was like a lion, lion of the tribe of Judah. And the second beast was like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night saying, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders fell down before him and sat on the, that sat on the throne and worshipped him that lived forever and ever and cast their crowns upon the throne saying, Thou art worthy. They throw their crown at his feet and say, thou art worthy. Yeah. They give up their crowns and they throw the crowns as Jesus is sitting on the throne. They throw their crown of life. Woo! Yeah. Because what, he's, what they're saying is, if it wasn't for you, if it had yeah. not been, for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't have this crown of life. The reason why I have this crown of life is because of Jesus. Yeah. They throw their crowns at his feet yeah. as they worship him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, verse number 11, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. He sees this, he has this scene, is a scene of um, of him entering this door, and this door is to heaven. My ending note here is, where are we in time? Where are we in time? How many of you think and believe that the world is three million years old. Anybody? Think? Isn't that what we were taught? Okay. Maybe I weren't taught anything. That's it. Darwinism? Yep. Suggests that the earth is at least, at least a million years. Yeah. Definitely 2.5 million. We have uh, un uninhabitable, and then we have dinosaurs that live for millions of years, and they can run this test that it's at least a million years. And so people think that the Earth is, has been in existence for at least three million years. No? no. Never heard of that before? I've heard it. Heard okay. of it. Heard it. Okay. It's three million years. What if I told you that the Earth is only... Not quite 7,000 years old. It's not quite 7,000, but let's say this. <laughs> 6,900 years old. Okay. From Genesis, from Eden until today. Here is why I think it's this and not this. We know that seven represents the complete number of God. Yes. Seven represents completion. Yes. Amen. If our historians are telling it's about three million, we got another four million <laughs> years before something great happened. Yes. Have you ever heard of the scripture? A thousand years is but a day, a day unto the Lord. Yeah. Have you ever heard that scripture? Yes, sir. 
It's in Proverbs. Okay. Or in Psalms, one of the two. A, a thousand years is but a day. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about 6,900 years. Give or take. And every 7,000 years, something happens. Yeah. I think we're even closer than 6,900 years. 69.99. We could be 69.99. We could be 60.95. 69.95. But I'm telling you, something is about to give place. Yes, amen. And God has always dealt with seven as a number of completion. Yes. But he starts, he finishes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, you can argue with me, and I've taught it because I'm a historian and a history teacher. Okay? I have. I believe biblically we're at that 7,000 year. We're right there at that 7,000. I don't think we're over 7,000. I believe we're right at that point for something to take place. You don't have to say amen, but you can say thank you, Jesus, to it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Here is what I sense is going to happen in 2022. There are three major attacks that are going to take place in in 2022 and they've already started now remember I talked to you about three invasions I told you that three invasions and that was Russia China and Iran Iran and Israel Three invasions that can take place. I believe something is going to happen in 2022. And we're already seeing the signs. Okay. Many of you, I, I have Jewish television, so I don't, I, I drink a cup of coffee and watch Jewish live TV every day because I want to know what's going on in the Middle East. And that's with Jewish television TV. Gives us an update, gives us history. Of Israel, but it also gives gives us the current events. So we see these three hotbeds in the world: Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, um, Iran, and Iraq. But along with these three invasions, I see three attacks that are going to take place. The first attack is this. It's going to be the attack of the flesh. Everybody say carnality. Carnality. It's demonic. It's going to invade. It has already invaded the church. Flesh. If you thought you have seen preachers fall because of extramarital affairs, and um, perversion going on, I suspect you're going to see an attack of carnality in the church. Yeah. People are being very fleshly. Another word for carnality is, guess what? Worldly conversation, worldly issues that are um, very, very, very worldly, um, and I think, I think I have this, uh, this attack of the casual. Um, I hope I've got it right. Somebody turn with me. Um, I think it's James chapter number. 
And if not, I'll correct it. James chapter number four and that is not it. I'm, I'm looking at that. I didn't think. Uh, I thought I wrote uh, James, but it's not. I'll have to find that scripture. That's not the scripture that I'm looking for. But what I want to share with you is that there is coming a time where men and women will not endure sound doctrine. And a lot of things are going to be permitted and come into the church, into the house of, of the Lord. When I was doing some study here and, and, and referencing this by Perry Stone, is that we see three times where Satan entered saints. One, he entered Judas, and Judas sold Jesus. He's called the son of perdition. At the Last Supper, that spirit entered Judas, and he goes out and betrays Christ. Number two, Peter, the devil entered Peter so much that Jesus had to rebuke him and said, Satan, get thee behind me. He rebukes the devil. He didn't call him Peter. He said, devil or Satan, get thee hence. And the, and the spirit of, of the devil entered him. And then there's a, an example in the book of Acts, Ananias and Sapphira. Mm -hmm. Ananias and Sapphira stole what belonged to God. Mm -hmm. And they lied on the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The Spirit entered them. They lied to, the, to, uh, to, to Peter. And immediately, guess what? Peter Paul, they died. They fell Jesus. to their death. And so we're going to see an, an increase of fleshly stuff coming into the body of Christ because of stress. Come on. Amen. Yes. The COVID is stressing folk out. Yes. Amen. Folk are crazy, y'all. Preachers are crazy. Amen. And there's nothing worse than a crazy preacher Amen. because crazy begets crazy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so what we're seeing is a lot of fleshly stuff. We're going through the motion, but no one having the ability to discern what is flesh and what is spirit. There's got to be some, not just someone, there has to be a, a body of saints that can tell the difference of when flesh is coming into something. Pride. Pride. Wanting to be right, doing it the world's way, when that invades the church. And so I, I, I believe with all of my heart that there is going to be um, a great attack of the flesh coming in, and we're going to see people fall. God is going to uncover what they're doing. Come on. Amen. Amen. And you're going to be able to see how carnal folk are. My God. Amen. I was just in a conversation not too long ago. I'm listening to this conversation. And in that conversation, it was revealed to me how carnal this person was. Because they refused to submit Ooh. to godly authority. 
Amen. They said, I don't know if I can submit to godly authority. Jesus. And immediately the Lord said, that's the flesh. Yes. That's the flesh. And we're going to see more and more people not willing to submit to godly authority. Yes. And we let the world's ways enter the place of God. I'm, and I'm working on something um, um, starting uh, on yesterday. There are sleeper cells in the church. Amen. Not everybody is saved in the church. Amen. Everybody's not godly. There are sleep cells Come on, sir. that are waiting to awake. They're on the deacon board. They're on the minister's board. <laughs> They're on the praise team. They're in the pew. They're in every audience. They're sleepy. Come on, sir. They are asleep. They are dangerous to the body of Christ because they walk in the flesh Amen. and not in the spirit. And when you walk in the flesh, Jesus. that's a dangerous place Amen. to be because you start to say things and do things that are not godly. Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. The second attack Jesus. is this. We're going to see the attack of Satan. Somebody turn with me to Revelations 12 and 12. We're going to see the attack of Satan. I know someone has said, and I've said it on a couple of times, that we're running out of time. How can you run out of time when you are an eternal being. I'm created to live forever. Amen. How is it that I'm running out of time? When I was created to live forever. But guess who's running out of time? Satan, Satan is running out of time. Hello, somebody? Amen. Can somebody read for me Revelations 12 and 12? Come on. Somebody read it for me. Therefore rejoice. Heavens and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down into you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Wow. Revelations 12 and 12. Behold Satan, for he has but a limited amount of time. Yes. So you're going to see the increase of attacks on the body of Christ from Satan. Why? It's not that we're running out of time. He's running out of time. He knows how the end is going to happen. He already knows. He knows the scripture. In the last chapter, he is thrown into the lake of fire. The Antichrist is thrown into the lake of fire. Death is thrown into the... And so you're going to see an increased attack from Satan on the body of Christ and upon the world. Yes. Somebody better say amen, amen to that. Amen. amen. And here's the last one. And you're already seeing this because it happens all the time. It's happening in the world, but it's happening um, in... Uh, the church. The attack of the offense. People are going to be offended. People are going to be offended. You can't tell folk the truth no more. I tell someone the truth, I'm quitting. I'm finished. You can't tell me I'm wrong. Nobody likes to be corrected anymore. Amen. Look at children. You try to correct your... Come on. They'll fight you. If you try to correct them. And so what we're going to see... We're already seeing it. 
Democrats offending Republicans, Republicans offending Democrats. Everybody is on edge. You can't tell me what to do. And we're going to see folk in the church because of the spirit of offense. This is what they're going to do. They're going to quit. Come on. Come on, somebody. Right. Amen. Don't tell me you haven't felt like that. Amen. I felt like it. <laughs> because it's like, who wants to be saved? Who wants to do right? There's only a handful of folk. I'm tired. I'm tired of having to do this and nobody else. And we've become offended and we start looking on ourselves. And not being able to endure. Come on, sir. So in this attack, many folk are going to leave the church. Amen. Because they got offended by what someone said. You don't have to like me or the horse I rode in on. But I ain't quitting for nobody. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I mean, you might fire me from the crystal. But you're not firing me from the kingdom. Amen. Amen. I don't have to preach here at the crystal. Come on. <laughs> but I have to preach in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. And because people have very, very thin skin. Amen. One moment they're working good, and the next moment they disappear. Come on, sir. Amen. Amen, sir. So what I'm saying to you. Don't get offended when people get offended Amen. and they leave. Amen. Keep Amen. on working. That's it. Because one of the goals is you receive eternal life from enduring. Amen. Those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So folk are going to get upset with Bishop. They're going to get up. Mother hadn't even been here for eight months. They're going to get upset with Mother Carter. <laughs> she ain't saying nothing. Sitting up in her bed. I just, you know. <laughs> finding an excuse Amen. to quit the kingdom. Amen. All that you've gone through. Amen. We're coming up to the, 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 the end of time. Mm. And now you're quitting. Because somebody didn't like what you Come said on, or yeah. what you did. Come on, sir. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. God has done too much for me just to give up. I know we get tired. Come on. Amen. We get sick and tired. I may be sick and tired, but I ain't going to quit. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. Amen. I've got to endure. Because if I endure, the same shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. But here's the attacks. Carnality is going to enter the church. Jesus. Satan is going to attack the church. He's going to increase his attack because he knows his time is not long. And then guess what? Folk going to just give up. Folk going to just stop coming. Hello, somebody? Amen. Am I talking to you? Come on, Jesus. Jesus. Because you were thinking about it. Jesus. You even said it. Come on, Six more months, I'm going to quit. Jesus. <laughs> Two more days. Just let Bishop look at me with a cross eye. Come on, somebody. <laughs> if I think he's talking about me, I'm going to hang here. Here's my resignation. Come on, sir. They're not, go they're not going to even resign. They're just going to quit. Come on. They're just not going to come back. Come on. They're not going to say anything. Jesus. That's it. You're going to see the increase of these three things in the body of Christ. I believe this year. Jesus. Woo. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Any questions before? Now we're letting you go at 825. Any questions, any comments? Yes. Yes. So if we endure, does it mean to advance as well? Endure means to have eternal life. If you endure, you go to the next door. I told you there are seven doors in the book of Revelation. We've talked about two doors, five more doors to go. You can't quit at door number two. 
It means to advance. It means to have eternal life. I was also wondering, what do these attacks, because China, Russia, Iran, and Israel, what do they mean? It, it's a great question, young man. What it means is this. Great question. And what you're going to learn uh, in Scripture is biblical prophecy. These three attacks are already foretold in the Bible. Yes, amen. That they must come before Jesus comes back. Yes. And remember I was saying something about Gog and Magog. It's already prophet. I, I'm going to show you that Gog and Magog are Russia and China. And Iran and Iraq are Arabs fighting against Jewish folk. I'm going to show you where the Antichrist is going to come from. I'm telling you, he's going to come from the region called Turkey. It's where the Antichrist is coming. So my eyes appealed on that area of Turkey. He's going to come up out of Turkey. Come on which used to be the region of um, God gave that land that is called Turkey to Israel. And this person is going to be, he's going to have Jewish blood and he's going to have Arab blood. And he's going to raise up and he's going to find the answer to COVID. He's going to have an answer for cancer. Come on, sir. He's going to solve an issue of economic devastation. Jesus. Amen. That, beg your pardon? What do, and also about Europe, what does Europe and what is Jewish blood and what does Europe mean? Jewish blood is according to Genesis chapter number 15 through 19. God speaks to a group of people through Abraham. And he makes Abraham's descendants his people. Okay? So these are people that are direct descendants of Abraham. Jewish people and Arab people are descendants of Abraham. One is promised money, land. And the others promise um, God's blessing. So they are actually, guess what? Brother and two brothers fighting for the control of God's attention. That's what it is. So there are two nations that are fighting for the control of God. And they are brothers. Ishmael and J Isaac are descendants from Abraham. Isaac's mother is Jewish and Ishmael's mother is Arab. Abraham is both of their fathers and they are fighting one another. I can't answer a whole lot of questions. So you, can, you can ask ask some questions after, okay? Yes. On the three attacks that you were talking about? Yes. The Lord has been deal telling me some things. It started last Wednesday during the New Day prayer when you asked us what did it mean to be lukewarm, and what he gave me was muscle memory. Ooh, wow. So when we learn how to, like, learning how to walk, it becomes a muscle memory. You don't have to put any thought into it anymore. You automatically do it. For a lot of us, church has become a muscle memory. It's what we've been trained to do. It's what we know to do. 
There's no thought behind it. There's no emotion behind it. Um, the Holy Spirit is going to flow because God is going to do what he's going to do regardless of the vessel. All he needs is the vessel. But for us, there's no input. There's, we're not giving of ourselves. We're not pouring out of ourselves. It becomes a muscle memory. And the other thing that he gave me, when Sister Myra was giving her testimony on Sunday and talking about God speaking to her in the three sixes, he said to me, I think you have said the scripture in the Wednesday night Bible study, they will know the truth and the truth will make them free. Yeah. And you may emphasize the point that it is make them free, not set them free like a lot of people misquoted. And the Lord said to me, what good does it do you to know the truth if you won't let it make you free? Wow. So that was the other thing that he said. And tonight, when you were talking about suppressing the attacks of the enemy before I got here today, um, he was saying <coughs> that I lost the train of thought. Just give me just a minute. The enemy. And I like to say that um, he's a great imitator and he likes to imitate the, what the Lord does. And so for a lot of us, it's time to go back to your first words. We've heard that before. To revive the fire and to, to bring us back to where we started. Mm -hmm. The enemy wants the same thing. And the saints are going to fall prey to some of those things that they thought they were delivered from. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring back your first sins. And he's going to bring back those things that you were bound by. You've been set free to. And you're going to walk into them again and be trapped again. <coughs> and that's how your flesh will fall. Wow. That's, that's, that's what's going to happen. Things that we've been set free of, they come back. Amen. And the Bible speaks of this in, in chapter Mark chapter 8. When a spirit returns to where it came from and find that that vessel is swept clean and empty, it re-enters. Amen. And the uh, Ladder is worse than the beginning. Yes, amen. amen. And people are going to be captured by the spirits mm. that they were delivered from Jesus. when they first came into the church. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. And I see it happening right amen. before my face. Jesus. The things that we were delivered from, amen. and the Lord broke it. Amen. They're creeping back in. Come on, sir. The Bible says they crept in unaware, yes. leading silly women captive. Yes. That's what the scripture said. Amen. Amen. Because we think we know. Just because the saints think a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. We think we know. We think we know what we're doing. We think we know. A lot of what you're teaching, you've heard before. So it goes in one ear and out the other when it's not so much the message, it's the urgency of the message that we need to take note of. But because we've heard it before, it's like water off a duck back. We don't have to tell us. I already know. The devil is a lie. You need to hear it again. Wow. Thank you. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful perception. You had your hand up, Pastor. No, no. Sir. no sir. Thank you. Thank you for the insight. Anyone else? Amen. Powerful teaching. You've heard this. You've been given the history tonight. Scripture by scripture, verse by verse, about John seeing a panoramic view in heaven of earth. And in the next chapter, the Lord begins to speak to John about prophetic issues. I've shared with you on the board. Here are the three major attacks that are going to happen in 22. And we're not waiting until November. It's already starting. Amen. People are being offended. People are being very carnal. And Satan is trying to wear us out. Come on, sir. Jesus. He's trying to wear the saints oh, out. Thank you. Trying to get us to quit. Trying to get us to Amen. just so tired of going through the death, the sickness, 
financial woes, trying to get us so discombobulated to isolate us. Mm. Come on, sir. Disconnect us from the saints. Jesus. And what I'm saying to you is tonight, endure. Stay yeah. connected. Yeah. Yeah. If you're involved in a good church, stay in that church. Amen. If you're not in a word church, find a word church Amen. that you can be fed by. Tonight, there is someone who's heard the word of the Lord. You still have time to repent. Jesus is the answer. For the world today, above him there is no other. Jesus is the way. You can repent of your sins tonight. God will save you, cleanse you by his blood. Wash you. White as the snow. And all he asks is that you give him praise. Give him your life. Give him your talent. Give him your trouble. And he'll give you an answer. Give him your addiction. And he'll set you free. Hallelujah. He'll make you free. He'll give you a new life. Hallelujah. Lord, I think today, if you will turn your life over to him and just say, Jesus, I surrender. I can't do it anymore. I've been buffeted. I feel like quitting. I've been attacked by Satan. Hallelujah. Attacked in my mind. Attacked in my body. Oh, Lord, going through carnality. But I want to withstand. I want to hold on to the end. God will save you. Thank you, Jesus. Will you be ready? Thank you, Jesus. When Jesus comes, will you be ready?